On today's show, we're going to be learning all about the master pedestal setting and the highlight and shadow settings on your camera. Good morning and welcome to Photo Just Good morning. It's not even morning. It's actually afternoon. I'm so used to that. Good afternoon and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photojoseph, traditionally 9.30 a.m. Pacific time, but this marks the first of what will be a new... Uh, it's not a serious, new, what do you call it? A new schedule, new part of the schedule. Every once in a while, I've bumped them to every three weeks for now. We're going to do a show later in the day at 3 p.m. And today's Wednesday, we're doing it at 3. Next time, we're going to do it on a Monday because that seems to make more sense, give our Monday morning a little bit more breathing room. And so every three weeks or so, and we'll see this might change, but we're going to do one later in the afternoon so that hopefully we can catch more of the live audience from all over the world, which is, uh, which is cool, which is exciting. I'm hoping to bring in some new folks who don't normally get to watch this live. If you are watching the show live for the first time today be sure to say hi in the comments put at photo joseph in front of it when you do that it comes up on the screen like this if you've never gotten to participate before we see who is here when you put at photo joseph it shows up nice and red on my screen and i know you've got a question speaking of questions this is going to be a complex show so first of all everybody cross your fingers and your toes that this goes off without a hitch second of all if you have questions throughout the show on the topic or on any other topic but you know as much as you can on topic Drop them into the live chat at any point you like. Make sure you put at Photo Joseph in front of it, and at the end of the show, we'll come back around and go through all the questions that are in there. So, what is today's show all about? It is about three things, actually two, but kind of three. So we're gonna be talking about master pedestal and the highlight and shadow settings primarily. Now, we can't really address those without also going into the luminance settings on the camera. So we're going to talk about that just to make sure that you have it set correctly, because if you don't, then this doesn't work. So we're going to touch on that a little bit, explain that a little bit, and then get back into master pedestal and highlight and shadow settings. So what are these? First, I'm going to explain some of this, and then we're going to obviously take a look at it and see how this all comes together in the real world. Master pedestal is your black point. That is the blackest blacks of your camera. You can raise that or lower that. You could, it's also called raising or lowering the floor. And if you raise or lower the floor, your darkest darks get either darker or lighter. Now, the, real, the only real reason you should be adjusting this is to match cameras from different manufacturers on set. So if you are doing a live product, usually a live production, because if it's post, that if it's not live, then you can always fix it in post, right? But if you're doing a live production and you have multiple cameras from multiple manufacturers, as I do in this production here, you can adjust the black level so that black level matches across all of your cameras. That is pretty much the only place you really, really need to pay attention to it. It is not, it is not a way to get more dynamic range into your shot. Now, this is something that I, when I was doing research for today's show, I ran into this a bunch, a lot of discussions online. I talked to my friends at Panasonic about this, just to triple confirm it. There are people who believe, there are individuals who believe that if you raise the master pedestal, which is going to make your darkest darks brighter, it's going to make them more gray instead of black, that you are introducing extra dynamic range and you're capturing extra dynamic range because look, I can see more data in the shadows than I could before. You're not. It's actually quite the opposite of that. You are basically, you all you're doing is lifting those shadows. And if you had data from here to here, you have just pushed this data up, squished the data into place, and thrown away all the capacity of the sensor to capture this part down here. So don't do it as a way to capture extra dynamic range. That's not how it's going to work. Now, in filming, some uh, some DPs may decide to raise the floor just to, for a shot, just to kind of raise the levels on that a little bit to get a little bit brighter because they want their shadows to be a little bit brighter. And then it's a creative decision and that's fine, but it is not going to get you extra dynamic range. So if you read that, it is false. It is not what it's doing. It's quite the opposite. So don't do it. So for the most part, most of you never need to adjust the master pedestal level. So when you see it, you can safely ignore it almost always. And we're going to see a yeah, possible exception in here. Highlights and shadows are next. Highlights and shadows are represented in the camera as curves, and we are, of course, going to be looking at this. And this is no different than the curves that you see in Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One Pro, whatever you're using. And with the idea behind a curve is you have a two-point curve in the case of the camera, and you can take your dark shadows and you can make them a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. You can take your highlights and make them a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. And the whole point here is that you are raising and lowering the brightness values of the darker ranges, not the darkest range, that would be your master pedestal, but the darker ranges, everything kind of below 50%, and the brighter ranges, everything above 50%. And just taking that, making it a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. Ideally, and it does to, to the degree that you don't really, really push things, ideally, what the expectation is, is that when you're adjusting the highlight and shadows, your floor, your black point doesn't change, your middle gray point doesn't change, and your brightest highlights don't change they are all kind of locked in 
and the curves are adjusting everything in between. So that's how the curves work, uh, the highlight and shadow work. The last part of this is our luminance settings. And this is where we're actually gonna start the live demo today. So when you look at the luminance level in your camera, you're gonna see a variety of numbers in there and you might be, be tempted to expand on them. And we're gonna show you exactly why you don't. So that's what we're gonna be looking at. First, we're going to explain how the luminance levels work and why you probably don't wanna change them and we'll see the effect that it has in camera. So let me show you everything that we've got set up here so you can uh, better follow along what we're actually doing. All right, first up we have a GH5. The GH5 is obviously where I'm gonna be doing all the controls on here. Now, incidentally, I should point out that many of the settings that we're looking at today, uh, the master pedestal setting is only available in the GH series. And actually, it's not, I didn't look in the G9. I didn't even look, but it's the GH series cameras. It's, this is a pro video level thing. Highlights and shadows is on all of your Lumix cameras. I would suspect that you're gonna find a similar thing on pretty much every camera out there, the highlights and shadow things. because so it's not a, a terribly unique thing. Um, master pedestal is something you're probably only gonna find on pro level video cameras. And then the luminance values that you can change, you will find probably only on the GH series or higher end video cameras as well. The lessons that I'm teaching today, incidentally, are not exclusive to Lumix. I am using it on Lumix, obviously. They might be called different things on your cameras, but it is something you're only gonna find on higher end cameras that are meant to do video production work because this, most of this doesn't really have anything to do with stills. Um, highlights and shadows, you can definitely adjust for stills, but we're looking at it from the video perspective. And like I said, highlights and shadows show up on every camera. So, um, all right, so we've got our GH5. We also have back here a X-Rite color checker video. It's the big color checker video. The camera is obviously pointing at the color checker. I have a feed for you looking through the color checker, or through the GH5, so that's the GH5 looking at the color checker. We are going to be throughout the course of today's presentation where I'm going to be turning on and off, and I'm working on turning it on right now, the menu command so that you can see what this camera is showing. What we also have is another view that is a close-up of an Atomos Ninja. Now, this is the uh, Ninja uh, uh, Assassin, the older Ninja. The signal from the GH5, let me just hide this for a moment here. The signal from the GH5 is being fed into the Ninja and you can see the menu display on here. So in fact, I'm going to right now turn that back off again. So what you're gonna see on here is a clean view of what the GH5 is seeing. This is so that I can bring this up nice and big and you can look at the RGB parade. So this is what you're gonna be looking at. And I'm going to, now that you've seen that, oh, incidentally, let me zoom back out. Just in case you're curious, GH5 is coming into here and then out of here is being fed back into that view, which is exactly what the camera sees. So we go back to this. Now that you know what you're looking at there, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom into that. So we're just looking at the parade because you don't need to see all the rest of it. And that is where we'll leave it for the duration of the show. Okay, so that is our basic setup. We've got our camera, we've got the color checker passport, and we've got the RGB parade showing up on the Atomos. Okay, now, Let's see here, that's that and that and that, explain the loop. Okay, now we get into what this card actually is that we're looking at. Let's go back to this view here. This card that we're looking at from x right has four gray levels, and this is what we're gonna be focusing on today. It's very important to know what these levels are supposed to be. The whole purpose of this is to adjust these levels so that when we're looking at it over here, we get them to line up in the right spots on this chart. That's the whole purpose of this. That is why we're doing this. And so what are these levels? Well. This is meant to be uh, zero, zero IRE, pure black. It is a shiny black, which is kind of, if, if I tilt this and it picks up a reflection, you see how it's glary. So it's very um, kind of tricky to light this and to get it exactly right so you get pure black, but that is the idea. The idea there is that it's pure black. This is 20 IRE. This is 40 IRE. And 40 IRE, by the way, is 50% gray. That is middle gray. And then this is 90. 90 being just below pure white, pure white being 100. So you have zero, 20, 40, and 90. Surprisingly, that information, it's like, you know, the scene in Star Wars where many boffins or something died to bring you this information. That's kind of what it takes to get this information. I email, this is not on the X-Rite website. I emailed them asking what they were. And instead of telling me what they were, they gave me these spreadsheets and charts and like massive amounts of data. And we went back and forth and back and forth. And finally they had said, well, that's what it is. And then I found other YouTube videos, people talking about it the same way. And so we concluded, all right, you know what? That's what we're going with. That said, here's something that I want to point out that I think is really important about setting up a color card like this or gray card like this. Yes, those values are supposed to be 0, 20, 40, 90. If you're looking at on the scopes and you don't have it exactly 0, 20, 40, 90, that's okay. What matters is when you have multiple cameras and you're trying to make a match is that they're the same 
and that you're getting a look that you like. You're gonna see as we go through different picture profiles on here that those gray levels shift dramatically depending on the profile that you're using. And that's by design, right? Do you want a profile that's a little bit more crunchy, higher contrast, you want it to be a bit flatter? Those different profiles are changing where those fall on the IRE scale. And that's perfectly fine. But what we're doing here today is we're going to use this to get it to a kind of native position, which is again, what you would do if you were matching this among multiple cameras. So those numbers are important. Those numbers also show up over here on the chart. So at the bottom of the line, that's zero. And then you can kind of see on there, you see, where is it? There we go. You can see there it says 20 and then that's 40. And then there's gonna be 90 between here. There's no line at 90, unfortunately, but those are the scales. Those are the lines that we're looking at. So that is the setup of what we've got. All right, cool. I'm looking at my notes here to make sure I'm not missing anything. So we're gonna look at the Luma part on this first, the luminance value. So let me go back into the camera here and make sure that the menu settings are going out. And we will do this. Let me set this on, turn these menus on here. Switch to this camera view, haha, <laughs> hello. And so now you can see what I'm doing in the camera. If I look in the camera to the, we are on the, um, what are these called, the motion picture menu. And if I scroll through here, we are going to find luminous level right at the top. So this is the setting that you're gonna see. You have three options in here. Zero to 255, 16 to 235, and 16 to 255. Zero to 255 is essentially pure black to pure white. It's actually in the space of video, in the world of video, it is super black to super white. The default on the camera is 16 to 235. 16 to 235 translates to, at 16, it's 7.5 IRE. And at 235, that is 100 IRE. That is the darkest dark and the brightest bright that you want for broadcast. Keeping in mind that broadcast is where your film's gonna go, whether it's going on TV or even on YouTube, basically follow these same levels. Um, this is what you want. So you wanna stay within that range, which is why the camera is set by default to 16 to 235. If you set it to zero to 255, you will actually be capturing more dynamic range in your shot. So if you wanna capture more dynamic range, this is how you can do it. However, if you don't grade it, if you just take that and stick it up on YouTube or put it on broadcast, it's going to clip your shadows and highlights because it's out of range of what the platform can handle. So you need to be within that 16 to 235 range, which is why for the most part, you can leave it in 16 to 235. If however, you do want to capture more range and you do want to then have to grade it and pull things in later, then by all means, go to zero to 255, but be aware of it. Then there's the 16 to 255, which is basically protecting your shadows, but not your highlights. I really can't imagine why you'd want to use that, but it's there if you wanted to. Now, just to really kind of drive the point home about the dynamic range. You've heard of vlog before, we've talked about it on the show before. The idea behind log is that you are capturing more dynamic range in log. So you think, well, hold on a second. If, if, I can, if I'm in log, which one of these settings would it be at? Watch, this is quite interesting. So if I pull up the main menu on here, the uh, photo style menu, you'll notice that I'm in a natural photo style right now. And you saw that I could choose between zero to 255 and 16 to 235. I'm gonna switch this over to log and bring up the menu again. And you notice now that luminance level menu is not available. It is locked in and you can see it once this goes away. There we go. You can see that it is locked in at zero to 255. So when you're shooting log, you are shooting the full range. This is why, this is part of why you get more dynamic range when you're shooting log. So when you're in log, you're locked into zero to 255. When you're in any standard profile, you have a choice. Only go to zero to 255 if you know that you're gonna grade it and you basically know what you're doing. Keeping in mind too, that if you underexpose a little bit and, and you're shooting zero to 255, anything below zero is gone forever, it's gone. Unlike if you're shooting 16 to 235, you got some leeway, right? If you underexpose, overexpose a little bit, you got some room to pull things in because there's a little bit more data in the sensor. If you overexpose when you're zero to 255, it's gone. So just be aware of it. It's just things that you want to know. Last thing I want to show you on here is what happens when we switch this while looking at the, uh, the chart on here. So let me go back in first of all and get out of log. We're going to go back into the natural mode. I'm using natural for this demonstration because natural is the most common, if you will. It's kind of the most, most neutral, I should say. It's the most neutral um, profile. Okay, so I've gone in there. Um, it is still set to 16 to 235. Okay, I'm going to now turn off the menus on here for a moment so that we're getting a clean output to the Atomos. And I'm going to show you the Atomos. And I'm going to, we're not going to worry about making this accurate right now. I'm just going to adjust the levels so that everything's within range. So you can see that your Darkest shadows are above zero, the brightest highlights are below 100, so everything's within range in here. And again, we're at 16 to 235. Now you can't see me do this, but I'm gonna go into the menu here, and I'm going to set this to zero to 255, and as soon as I do that, 
look at what happened. See how it's expanded beyond the range? We are out of range. We are in super black and super white mode. We are beyond what can be broadcast. If we were broadcasting live while set right there, that data would be gone. So, and in fact, this is actually really interesting because you are seeing a live broadcast right now. So you should be seeing, if we go to there, you should be seeing blacks that are below black and whites that are above white because we have expanded beyond the range. So that is what that is. All right, so with that in mind, we're gonna go back to 16 to 235 because that is the range that we wanna be in. Okay, so that's that part of this. Now we've got the, um, now that we've got that part of it kind of out of the way, we know that we need to be in 16 to 235. Now we can go back to what we really wanna talk about, which is master pedestal and the highlights and shadows. So let us go and I turn the menus back on. Let me turn the menus back on here so that you can once again see what's coming out of this. And we'll go back into this view here. And I'm going to go to my master pedestal. There we go, pa master pedestal. So this is what I'm going to be changing on here. This zero, it can go all the way up to plus 15 or minus 15. Yeah, you can see that there. Okay, so let's take a look. I mean, now that I've turned this view back on, I actually realize I need to turn this off. So let me turn this off so you don't see the data coming out on screen. And I'm going to show you this screen here. So now I'm going to go back in. And again, you can't see me doing it, but you're going to see the effects of it. I'm gonna go back into my master pedestal settings and it's at zero right now and I'm gonna start adjusting it down or up. Now notice there is going to be some level of the grays changing just because of the nature of stretching it out this far. But essentially what we're looking at is just the floor being moved. Now the rest of these, the rest of the uh, levels here are not accurate right now. I, they're not set in the where they should be and that's fine, that's by design. This is being set up this way so that you can just see how that floor goes up and down. So this is where once you've got the rest of it dialed in and we're gonna kind of do this all together, where you would go in and adjust that floor so that your camera's matched. That's the whole point of that. So that's all it's adjusting is the floor. Yes, it pulls the mid ranges a little bit with it, but it really is about adjusting the floor. So that's it, that's all there is to that. So let me put that back to zero for now. The next one is the one that's more fun to look at. So let's do, let's go back to this view here. Now we're gonna look at the highlights and shadows. So here, if we go to highlights and shadows, there it is. This is the highlights and shadows interface. So while I adjust this, this is a nice way to see it because you can see the highlight and shadow menu very, very small. When you're looking at it on the screen itself, you can kind of see on here, it takes up the majority of the screen, but because we're sending it out over the HDMI output, you're seeing a nice small menu with a big card behind it. So as I adjust this, you're gonna very easily, very clearly see what's happening on the x right card itself. So we go back into this, and I adjust this by, well, first of all, I have presets. You see down on the bottom, I can choose these different curved presets on here. So we've got a, here, it's darkening the shadows and brightening the highlights. This is going the reverse, it's raising the shadows and lowering the highlights. But if we just start at any regular point here, you'll notice on this particular camera, this is the way it works in the Lumix cameras. Again, on yours, it may be a little different. But you see in the middle where it says shadow, plus and minus zero, highlight, plus and minus zero, and it's showing me which knobs to use. So I can use the controls on the camera, the physical dials, to adjust that. So there I've raised the shadows five points, lowered the shadows five points. Here I can raise the highlights five points and lower them five points. And you can see visually what's happening. So if you like, you know, forget about the scopes for a second. If you just like to have crunchy shadows and bright highlights, that's how you would set it up. So this is gonna give you that kind of, uh, that higher contrast range. This is something very commonly called an S-curve. If you look back at this, you see it's in the shape of an S. Well, that's hence the, the S-curve name. We've created that S-curve in there and we have that nice little contrast, added contrast in there. We're, we're definitely, we've totally messed up setting these scopes to uh, 40 and 20. That's not the point here. We're just in here making a look. So that's the point of that. Right, so that's how that's adjusted. So we can adjust the master pedestal to change the blacks. And we can adjust these to adjust the mids and highs. Now, what is actually being changed? Well, for this, we're gonna take a look at the scopes here. And I am going to, let's go back to a default position here. I'm going to change the shadows. And again, what you're looking at right here, and actually you know, what I need to do as well is turn off the display so that you're seeing a nice clean output here. Turn that off again, there we go. So what you are going to see in the highlights and shadows adjustments, let me pull this back up again, is, why, well, sorry, let me back up. Watch these lines on here. So there's my black, there's my 20s, target at 20, there's my target 40, target 90. They're not set in the right place right now, that's fine. As I adjust it, watch which ones of these lines move. So I'm gonna adjust my shadows 
and you see how, yes, the black point is moving as well because it kind of has to to some degree, but really what we're looking at is that lower, darker shadow, that 20. And then when I adjust the highlights, it's the 90 that moves. Now we are getting a little bit of pull off of the 40 as well, and part of that is because we're so kind of stretched out and, and overexposed here, but we are adjusting primarily the highlights on there. So with that in mind, look at it this way. We have control over the black point with our master pedestal, over the 20 IRE point with our shadows, over the 90 IRE point with our highlight, meaning that the middle point, the 40, the middle gray, we don't have control over using any of these controls except for exposure. So the way that we want to approach this is to set the exposure using you know, ISO, shutter speed, aperture, shutter angle, and aperture, whatever combination you want. Use those to get that middle gray locked into place first and then use the other tools to adjust the rest of them, the 20, the zero, and the 90, to get them into place. And that's where we conclude with this. That's our final step. So we've looked at how to adjust all these different parts in here. Now we know what to adjust. So we're gonna start by getting our exposure so that the middle point is accurate, and then we will adjust the highlights, the shadows, and if necessary, the master pedestal, but it probably won't be. Now, but before we can do any of that, if those of you, for those of you who have looked at this sort of thing before, you might have noticed when looking at this close-up of the scopes here, that um, take a look at the, uh, at the 40 line right here. Other than the fact, or I guess it's what is it, 60 now, but look at those lines right there. Other than the fact that they're not in the right position, what else is wrong with them? The R, G, and B, the red, green, and blue, don't line up. What does that tell me? It tells me that my white balance is off. So before you go around messing with this, it's probably gonna be important to get your white balance right. If your white balance isn't accurate, then those lines are not gonna be lined up. You're gonna have more blue or less red or whatever, something else wrong with the image, keeping it from being true neutral. So that's actually, before we do anything else, gonna be our first step is to set the white balance. And just to kind of really show this, well, I'm gonna do it like this. I've got my other side of this checker card here has a white balance tool. And this is a spectrally neutral white balance tool. It's quite cool. If you read about this thing on the, um, on the X-Rite website, it talks about how the materials that are made with it, the color of it is designed to reflect every spectrum of light or virtually every spectrum of light back to you, giving you the most uh, even white balance. Pretty cool, right? And for those of you who are wondering about white balance versus should you use a white card or a gray card to do it, the fact that this card is not pure white, it is a neutral gray, gives you that answer. You want to be white balancing with something that is neutral gray, not pure white. I actually did a show on that a while ago. I'll link to that up here. It's kind of an interesting topic to discuss, but out, out of the realm of this show. Anyway, so that's set. So now let me go back and set my colors to neutral here again. And we are going to position this back in so it fills the screen here. Close enough. Uh, we are going to look through this screen again. I need to turn the menus back on so you can see what's happening. So let me do that. I wish there was an easy way to toggle this on and off without going to the menu, but there isn't. Okay, so now we're looking through here. Let's exposure's way up. Let me pull this down a little bit. Uh, white balance. This is where we're going to adjust the white balance. So I'm going to go into my white balance setting, and I'm going to start by taking a Kelvin adjustment here and just adjusting this up and down. And you can see the colors changing there on the output, right? But now take a look at the same thing on here. And now look at how these are changing. So from here, what I could do is manually go in and adjust these until they're perfectly accurate, perfectly lined up. That would be one way to do it. Or what I could do is simply go into a custom white balance set. And we'll just go like number three here, say select white set, hit OK, and it sets it. Now let me redo that for those of you who are looking at the, uh, the wrong screen. <laughs> I'm going to go back into the white balance setting here. I choose a preset. Well, this time we'll use preset one. I just go white balance set. I hit set and it resets it back to neutral. And now if we go back to the close-up in here, we'll see that those are neutral. Now, if for whatever reason they still weren't quite right, or if you just felt like you wanted to adjust this a little bit more manually, you can do that. You can go in and adjust the color, and really you could adjust the color on here, and I'll show you this, and watch there. And I can't show you both simultaneously, but watch how this works. So I could go into here, go back into my white balance setting, and if I go with the down arrow, it goes into adjust. And now I can go in and I can adjust for very fine levels of adjustment in here. Right, so I can change that. And if we go back to the looking at the RGB parade, I could go in here and I could very subtly make adjustments here. So if I really wanted to kind of dial something in, if it for whatever reason wasn't exactly right, I could go in here and just tweak a little bit to get it just right. But I'm going to put it at its default setting. I'm actually going to do a new calibration one more time, white set. There it's set, and we are nice and neutral. So that is our first step to get that neutral white. Now we can go back to setting the exposure. So let me 
me flip this thing back into position here. And again, I got to make sure that I'm not getting any reflections on that. I think that looks, uh, it looks good enough there. Zoom in a little bit. You don't have to, by the way, you don't have to zoom in like I am here. You can do it way out like that. That's fine. You'll still see the data that you need on the parade, but it's just easier for this. If I just kind of zoom in all the way, you can like really clearly see what's happening. All right, so that's in place. Now we're going to switch back over to this view and we're gonna adjust the exposure. So I'm gonna just very quickly make sure that everything is set up right. So I'm going to turn off my external display so it's not uh, confusing the parade. And I'm going to, my white balance is already set, I know that. And I'm going to double check that my, I suppose you could watch this view while I do this. Let's go to, go to this view, there we go. Um, my master pedestal is at zero. And I'm going to make sure that my highlights and shadows are neutral or flat as well, and they are. Okay, and I know you can't see that because I've turned that off so that what you're seeing on the RGB parade is clean. I know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay, so now let's go take a look at the RGB and I'm going to adjust exposure. I'm gonna do this just by adjusting ISO. This is actually really, really dark on here right now. It's one of the challenges I had setting up for this show. I couldn't find a way to light this without me casting shadows on it. And I had a hard time lighting me without shining light onto the lens. It was a whole, this is half of what I've been doing today, getting this set up. So we're dealing with the fact that it's dark. It doesn't matter, I'm gonna crank the ISO. It's irrelevant to what we're doing today. The end result is the same. So back to this view. I'm now going to stop shaking the table. I am then going to adjust my ISO until my middle point there is where do I want it. I want it at 40, right? So that is too bright. Let's bring this down to about 40. So that is at 40. It's close. It's not perfectly on 40. And we can see, yeah, well, if I go there, that's too high. That's a little bit low. At this point, if I was doing this, I want to be super accurate about it. I would probably control that last little bit of light control with an ND filter. Because when you're adjusting your aperture, unless you have a stepless aperture, if you got a stepless aperture, then you can exactly position it. But if you got your aperture the way you want it, your shutter angle's at 180, maybe you're fixed at a specific ISO you want to be shooting at, um, and you can't get that exact range, that's where a variable ND comes in handy and you can adjust the exact, exact amount of light coming in. So that's how that would work. Anyway, we're going to leave it like so. We're gonna call that even on the 40 in there. And after we play with other things, we, uh, we may end up getting it balanced out in the end anyway. We can very clearly see that our whites are not bright enough and our mids are too dark. So let's start adjusting. So I'm gonna go into the camera and again, you can't see this part of it, but I'm gonna go into the camera and I'm gonna start raising the shadows and one or two clicks on the shadows brings those up and then I'm gonna raise the highlights and we can get that up to about, uh, say right about there, somewhere around there. We don't wanna go too bright, we wanna be careful. We do wanna be careful, but that's looking pretty good. And my black looks like it's getting some reflections. You can see as I'm moving around, you can see the little bit of me getting picked up on the reflections, but the darkest part of that is what I'm really focused on and that is just above zero, which is right about where I want it. And that is what that looks like. And that is technically very, very accurate at this point. That's it. That's all you gotta do. It, now, if the black point wasn't right, I could adjust the black pedestal, but I don't need to. You saw where it was on there. If we look at that, you'll see it's just above the black, which is where I want it to be. If it was at zero or crushed at zero, then I would definitely be crushing detail in the blacks. Do not wanna do that. So it's just above black, which is where I want it to be. And at this point, I'm looking at that going, that looks pretty darn good, looks pretty clean. Now here's, I did that, let's see, if we look at these settings on the camera now, um, it is, my highlights are actually raised quite high, plus five, my shadows are raised quite high as well, plus two. That's a lot, right? That's a lot of change to get it technically accurate. Well, in broadcast, we have a color space called Rec. 709 that is the most, kind of, that's your standard broadcast color space. The GH5 can be set into a 709 profile. It's called like 709 because it's, well, it's like 709. So let me do that. Um, let me go into the highlights and shadows and reset them and I'm going to turn the menu back on so you can see what's happening here. And then let's go into the camera. Actually, we'll do it this way. There we go. Go into the camera here, and I'm going to set my color profile. So there it's at natural right now. I'm gonna go past log to 709. So that's 709L, like 709. And we select that, and we go back to this view and raise the exposure just a hair. And you see without any adjustments, without any highlight and shadow adjustments, we are essentially spot on. I'd say it's somewhere between those two, isn't it? So there again, you need that ND or a stepless aperture to really get it right. But that Rec. 709 is giving you 
that standard neutral broadcast profile. So if you want to shoot as flat and standard as you can without getting into log or cine D or any of that, you can shoot in 709 and then you're gonna get that more neutral, more accurate, I suppose, profile. If your camera doesn't do that by adjusting the highlights and shadows as I've done in here, you can get it into that space manually. So that is all there is to it, I think. Yeah, oh, that was it. That's everything I wanna show you. It actually worked. Ooh, guys, if you feel like you learned something today, let me remind you about how this show works. We do this on something we call a value for value proposition. If you feel like you've taken value from today's show, and I'd like to think that today's show, if you've gotten this far, has provided some value for you, then consider putting value back. Head over to photojoseph.com support, and you'll see all the different ways that you can do that there. And let me tell you, it's not on that card yet, but let me tell you the best way that you can do that, the way you can help out the show the most, is to become a member at photojoseph.com. When you're a member at photojoseph.com, that allows you access to all of the live training we've ever done, which goes back years and years and years. Unlimited, kind of a Netflix model. You pay a monthly or an annual fee and you get all the live streaming, all the streaming you want, um, the replays rather. The live streaming is always free, by the way. You get all the replays that you want of the software live training and of the new series that we've just kicked off called Business of the Business. And this is interviews with content creators, photographers, filmmakers, YouTubers, people whose job it is is to create content. It's interviews with them about the business side of their business, how they run their business, everything from sales and marketing to taxes, finances, all that kind of stuff, it's all being covered in that course. We've got one interview under the belt, which we just did a couple weeks ago with Caleb Pike of the DSLR Video Shooter channel here on YouTube. And I've got a bunch more people lined up over the coming months, so it's gonna be a really fun thing to watch. And those, again, you get to watch them live for free if you can catch them live, but if you wanna watch them afterwards, over to photojoseph.com. And you can learn all about all that at photojoseph.com support. So I hope, my friends, that was interesting to you. Now, whew, that was a lot. Let's jump into the q and I saw a bunch of stuff going by on the, uh, on the Q&A, on the questions, on the chit chat here. And so if you haven't gotten your chat question in there, get it in there now because it is time for the Q&A.